Hey, how you doing? That's my friend Boris, and he's absolutely obsessed with this program called Anki. Anki is a spaced repetition open source flashcard program. It basically helps you to learn things efficiently and properly. If you've heard of Quizlet, imagine it's Quizlet's older, wiser, meaner brother. Boris also studies languages, and he's always been trying to get me on the Anki hype train, especially since we've left school, so he feels he can impart his wisdom without it affecting his position in the class compared to me. Recently, I sat down with him over a phone call, and since then, I've gone away and had a look at Anki for a few weeks, and whilst I'm still just scratching the surface of its full capabilities, I feel that I've got a really good system in place for learning languages, set texts, vocab, all that sort of stuff, which I wanted to share. So when you open up Anki, you'll see this. And we have a few different pages at the top. The first page is Dex, which is really for learning your flashcards. The second one is Add, which is what we'll mostly be talking about today, which is creating your flashcards. So although we're mostly talking about adding flashcards today, of course we've got to understand how the Dex part work in order that we can prime our flashcards to be as useful as possible when we're looking at the deck feature and learning them or when we're trying to find a flashcard again when we're browsing for them. Let's start with decks, which as I've said is the page for learning your flashcards. If possible, you want to keep your amount of decks as little as possible and take good use of sub decks or tags to differentiate your flashcards within these decks. I just think this looks neat. It's basically just folders, right? You can have one main folder and then all your subfolders, just so it doesn't look so clunky of having everything right there. Alternatively, it just means you can study everything at once. You can just click on your deck and it will run through all your subdecks that for the day within that main deck. Let's also talk about tags. Tags are similar in the sense that you can tag different words in each deck or subdeck, and you can also filter the words you're learning for that day or that session by this tag. So every single word I have within the Iliad, I put a tag on which book it's in. So if I were to ever have a test where I had to cram one book's worth of vocab, instead of just having to go through the whole deck, I could just search and create a session for just that little tag, which I think is useful. So now let's look at exactly how I create these cards. When I press add and this comes up, we can see we have something at the front, something on the back. That just works like a normal flashcard. Anki will show you the front and you have to try and get the back. We have a space for tags at the bottom, which I briefly explained, and at the top we can see the basic card type, which we're not going to change, and the deck that you want to put it in. If I type in my tags I24, we can see that that's how I would tag if we're looking at book 24, which we will for today. Obviously, in order to put the words I don't know, I have to be looking at the text and being trying to translate it first. So that's what I'm doing here. And as I'm going through this, I realise that this is the first word I don't know on line two. So I go back to my Anki and I make sure that I'm in the right deck, which I was. I've added a tag and now I'm going to get my front. What I do here is I literally just copy everything from Perseus. I always make sure to have a line reference in, which we can see at the bottom. And again, I know which book it is because of that tag. Some people like to put just the word there, but I'm not too worried about that. Also, sometimes the words don't appear very often. So if it's not a major word, it makes sense to learn it in its context. If a word appears six times in 14,000 lines, it's not too important to know the word and not have that crutch of the context to help you remember it. You might as well just learn it in that phrase. Let's just pause it here and see what I've done. I put a tilde and then I've bolded the word that I'm exactly looking for. What this allows me to do is again, if I want to find this specific flashcard, I can search the tilde and the word and it will come up in Anki search as opposed to if I weren't to have this, I wouldn't be able to differentiate which flashcard was which. I'm just pasting the back in now. So what I did is I clicked on that word. You can see this in my previous video, which is all about Perseus, and it's taken us to a new tab, which is this translation and some useful grammar points about it. Then what I do is I go into my snipping tool. This is a picture of Apollo from something else. And I take a snip of exactly what we have here. And this is what I'm going to put on the back. When I'm actually making my tags, I create them backwards. So I put the tag in first, then I put the back, and then I put the front in. I just find it's a bit easier, especially when you're creating 20 cards in a row, but it doesn't really matter, and it should still be easy to follow along. Here's another example from the same set of five lines. So I'm finding my next word and I'll click it. Straight to the snipping tool. You just screen grab that whole thing to put on the back of your card. And again, I've just pasted that right in the back. Then again, I know I already have this in my clipboard, so I can just quickly find the first few lines again, and then that tilde bold for the next thing, and I can simply add it. Let's go and find that flashcard, just so I can show you how the tilde and bold stuff works, 
and how that's sometimes really useful. And if I flick back over to my Anki now and press browse, I can type this in at the top. Tilda, and then I put in my word and I can find the flashcard again that I want and I can see everything I wanted to. That's it for this video. Hopefully that all made sense and I'm really looking forward to watching this video back in a bit to see if I actually change my opinions on how these flashcards work best when I start to build up bigger numbers and if anything changes in that regard. But apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.